From the boxing ring to your podcast station, here are the three guys that talk nothing but boxing, Ricky and Ricky and Juan. Boxing Talk, welcome back to another episode, episode 58 of Boxing Talk. With me as always is Enrique. What's up guys? Juancho. What's up, what's up? What's up, guys? Hey, you know, every time we, we start our boxing, you know, um, episodes, we just go straight into boxing. This time I want to change it up a little bit. Let's get to know each other. Enrique, what do you like to do um, for fun? Uh, man. Uh, I like to golf. I like to play ping pong. Uh, I like to do a lot of things. Anything outdoors, I like to okay, do a lot okay. of things. That's what about you, Pancho? Yeah. Uh, How is that a cat? <laughs> because we literally spend each like every night playing video games. So <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, that yeah. too. Video games. DK, you didn't mention Call of Duty. Yeah, video games for sure. Okay, what about you, Juancho? Uh, I just like keeping up with soccer and basically every sport because I watch. I'm a sports guy, so I watch everything. Oh, Juancho, about that. So, so let me know about the the Mexico making it to the Mundial, right? Yeah, well, there's 32 teams that made it to the Mundial. So, I mean, the country that I go for, obviously, because I'm from there, is Mexico. Uh, the U.S. made it is one of them. Canada made it um, second time in the, their history. So, that was interesting. Oh, well, nice, dude. And for all the listeners, Juancho is from Puebla. So, for all those poblanos out there, man, arriba Puebla. Right, Juancho? Yes, sir. Yeah. Best food and out for there. for me, guys, no, what happened? I said the best food out there. Okay, maybe. I don't know if all the listeners agree on that, but okay, that's for another day. Um, uh, for me, what do I like to do? Crap. Uh, I like, well, we haven't done it any, we haven't done it any, any, we haven't done it yet, but, but we used to go shooting. Well, twice, no? Yeah. We like to go shooting. Yeah. I like golf. I like golf. Um, yeah. I just spending time with the family. But uh, just wanted to change it up a little bit for the listeners, man. I know that just dive into the uh you know the boxing stuff and i know this is a boxing talk uh, podcast but you also get to you know we spend a lot of time on this so get to know us a little bit uh i know some of you guys get to interact with us on on uh, instagram and whatnot but uh, yeah just wanted to do that a little bit but let's go into sandor martin versus jose felix so martin wins via unanimous decision to become the new wba international super lightweight champion and improves his record to 40 Two and thirteen KOs. Judges had it ten and zero, uh, ten and zero, and nine and one for Martin. Uh, thoughts on his performance, guys? What did you guys think? Honestly, I I, I can thought... say that you know, my bad, KK. Uh, um, but I can say that no, he was uh, he, he was you know he won by a blowout, like you said. All the judges had it for him, um, ten zero for two judges, and then one of them nine one. Um, it shows why, you know, he fought this guy, which to me, in my opinion, he was a tomato can. I think he is a tomato can. But, you know, that was the whole point. After when, having a great win, why not keep showing off his skills um, so that he can fight another top guy? Um, but is he ready for those champions or is he even like, well, that the champion? Is he ready for the champion? I don't think so. Is he ready for a top guy? Maybe. But I don't see him, you know, defeating them. I see him giving him good competition, but not defeating any of the top contenders in the division. Okay, okay. What I about think, you? Enrique? I think for Martin, this was a fight uh, for his comeback to 140, because we all know he defeated uh, the big upset in Mikey Garcia. Mm -hmm. So I think this was just a welcome back fight to 140 in his home country, mm -hmm. a, a fight that made him look good. Um, I don't think his intentions were to face a top contender. Uh, I think his intentions to face a top contender next uh, is definitely definitely something that's in his future, um, especially because he did look good. He looked good against Jose Felix. I think it was a measuring stick fight, too, because Jose Felix had been in there with I, um, Isaac Cruz, who we know is a top uh, lightweight. And then he's also been in there with uh, Tyrone McKenna, who – who was just in there with uh, Regis Progre. So I think it was more of a measuring stick fight, more of a, you know, show-off fight for him in front of his fans in Spain. Because, um, you know, guys, we don't get many fighters that are popular from Spain, to be honest with you. I mean, 
uh, besides Sandro Martin, the other popular Spanish fighter was Kiko, and we all know mm -hmm. Kiko spent. So um, I think that's what this fight was. He did look good. He handled business. He 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 blanked out Felix. He there was some shots in there that he just rocked Felix back. I'm surprised he didn't get KO'd. But then again, Martin is not really a knockout guy. In 42 fights, he only has 13 knockouts. So he's more of a boxer. And that's that's what worries me is if he faces one of these top guys, if he can't knock out guys like Jose Felix, he's definitely not going to be able to knock out these top contenders. But, I mean, guys, he can face guys like Gary Antoine Russell, who's there. Mm -hmm. He's got Honor Balboza Jr., Jose Pedraza, Jack Catterall, Regis Progre, Jose, Jose Cepeda, Jose Ramirez, or even Josh Taylor. So, I mean, those are the, – the super lightweight division is stacked right now. And then supposedly Teofimo Lopez is going to start campaigning there soon. We'll see if, like, guys like Haney and Ryan Garcia later on down the road move up to super lightweight. So – um, it's going to be an interesting uh, division. It, it already is, and it's only going to get better. Yeah, no, I, I agree. You know, uh, I think uh, Sandor Martin, look, he boxed beautifully. But I agree with Juancho. You know, like he said, you know, Jose Felix Jr., tomato can. It was expected. Uh, fun, I, I was uh, researching Jose Felix Jr., and uh, fun fact about him, he was born on the same day, May 5th, as me. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but he's from yeah. 1992. I'm from 88. That was pretty cool for yeah. those mochis Mexico. So, hey, good job for Jose Felix. He got out there with Sandor Martin. But, obviously, Sandor Martin won that by a long shot. And uh, it, it was a good fight. It was entertaining for me. Uh, and mm -hmm. I'm sure it was entertaining for the listeners and you guys. Uh, but that was the only uh, fight that we had this. Well, not the only fight, but the only fight that we previewed in the last episode. Yeah. Uh, so, let's go into our boxing news, guys. So, what do you guys uh, think about Gilberto Suro Ramirez stating he will move up to Cruiserweight? to challenge uh, Ilunga Makabu for the WBC belt. That's that's interesting. Yeah, I mean, Surdo, I mean, people, at first Canelo was entertaining this idea, mm -hmm. but obviously Canelo is now going to face Bivol. And Surdo was literally waiting on what Canelo was going to do because Canelo does what he wants. So, you know, he faced Bivol, and then obviously Better Bev is going to face Smith. So that leaves Surdo at facing nobody with the title at his division. Could he face a Callum Smith? Yes, of course, but that that's more more risk than it is reward for him. Um, but facing Makabu, it's a risk too, but it's also if he if he risks it and wins, he gets a, a strap at, at the cruiserweight division. And Surdo's a big guy. He's what, six three, six four, so he can definitely he could definitely make the two hundred pounds and, and and make it healthily and um, I think normally he walks around at that weight and he has to cut down to 175. So this would be pretty pretty good. I mean, Casurdo would be way bigger than Macabo. Macabo's well only 5'9, 5'10. He's not that big of he a cruiserweight. He looks little. Weight. Yeah, he's not yeah. that big. Yeah. What do you what think, do you think Juan? I also think the same as Kiki. I think this is a good fight for him. I think that, you know, Surdo can showcase why he's a top guy uh, and why he's a notable guy, actually. Um, he has, you know, the resume and all that, but I, I honestly, I think he knocks him out. I think he knocks Ilanga Makabu out. Um, so there's a dog. He's just a beast, man. Mm -hmm. No, I agree. I agree. I, agree I don't know, dude. Maca I, Macabu, Macabu's pretty, Macabu's pretty sturdy, dude. He's small, but he's a tank, bro. Uh, I don't know. I think, I think. Surdo takes some dude like punch, punch of once, stuff, once, once, once. Well, I know. Feels, I, yeah. yeah, I'm saying Surdo. I'm but saying I'm Surdo saying wins, of course. But I, as far as KO, I don't think so. My, nobody's I, I been KO. not even not even the biggest of cruiserweights have been able to knock down or KO Makabu. I, I doubt mm -hmm. Surdo would. Because okay. Surdo, Surdo couldn't even knock out guys at 168 at times. Yeah. You know what I mean? And the guys he's been knocking out at 175 have been tomato cans too. So I don't know. We'll see. Makabu's a different beast uh it'll definitely he'll definitely be a tougher fight than some of the guys at 175 he's been facing recently yeah we'll see well, that's true but um guys as, as we continue with our episode uh just a quick reminder follow us on uh, boxing talk podcast on instagram and boxing talk pod on twitter um that, that those are the platforms that we're on usually oh and youtube sorry guys youtube uh boxing talk pod enrique no just boxing talk Oh, just boxing talk. Check us out. We yeah. reached 400 views on one of our episodes, which was pretty exciting, guys. So uh, that's pretty dope. And sh big shout out to uh, uh, J 
James Gorman. Gorman, I know you tune in every time, so thank you for communicating with us on Boxing on our on our Instagram page. We see you, man, and we appreciate you. I haven't heard much from Edito. I hope everything's okay with Edito, man, our, our other loyal listener. I haven't really talked to him as much. So, if, Edito, if you're listening to this, I hope you're doing okay, hermano. Uh, and uh, hit us up, man. See what we want to know how you're doing. But, uh, guys, talks of a fight between Kell Brook and Chris Eubank Jr. are getting closer. Parentheses. I mean, quotation, closer. Most likely at a catchway between 154 and 160, according to boxer CEO Ben Shalom. What do you guys think about that, Juancho? Man, this is a, to me, this would be a good fight, man. You know, Kell Brook having a, a, a nice win right now. Uh, Chris Eubank Jr. suffering from opponents that don't want to fight him. Uh, well, not that don't want to fight him, but they pull out last minute. Um, but I, I think it's, it's nice to see this fight. I think it should happen. Um, but I still think that you know Chris shows why he's uh, one of those top guys. Even though, uh, you know Kell Brook, I think to me is it a really good. Uh, stamina right now, really good fit uh, wise. I think uh, he still gets defeated by Chris Eubank Jr., man. What about you, Pompa? I mean, it seems like a lot of people want that Kell Brook fight. I guess uh, Kell Brook is very popular because everybody's calling out his name. Danny Garcia called him out. Chris Eubank Jr. wants him. Uh, Kell Brook, if he fights again, I don't think he's going to fight at 147 anymore. 147 has always been tough for him to cut down to. He was campaigning before this Amir Khan fight. He was campaigning at um, 154 for a bit. He's even flirted with 160 one time against Triple G, but uh, we all saw that that was kind of a mistake. He got beat up by Triple G, so I think that's why he's scared to move up to to 160. Um, and plus, Chris Eubank Jr. is naturally a big middleweight because Eubank Jr., before dropping back down to 160, he was campaigning at 168 for a while, um, but he realized he was a little too too small for the weight class, so he dropped down to 160. So I don't know. I, I mean, Kelbrook is a 154-pounder, guys. Eubank's a 160-pounder, so why not meet in the middle and fight at 157? You know what I mean? Um, mm-hmm. Every guy makes a sacrifice. It's a sacrifice for Brook because 160 is too big for him. And it's a sacrifice for Eubank because, you know, less than 160 is too small for him. But, hey, if you want this fight and you guys are doing it for the money or for legacy, whatever you're doing it for, you got to meet in the middle. I'd say meet in the middle, fight at 157 if it's going to be a catch weight. It would definitely be a, a, a big fight in the U.K. because those are two big names out oh, there. Yeah. So, I don't know. I, I Eubank is good, guys, but I don't, I don't know. I think he's one of those guys that's overhyped, and I think he's over – overhyped because he's fought guys that are supposed to make him look good and the guys that the guys that he he's fought that were top guys he's lost to he lost to billy joe saunders i mean a boxer kel brook can box too so if brook can just uh keep his distance and and outbox eubank he, he'll frustrate him all night i think brook could take that fight but it's all it's all about if you if eubank lands that one good punch because eubank is stronger then you know We've seen Cal Brook get knocked out before, so I don't know. It's an interesting fight, though. I'd definitely like to see this fight if it happens. Yeah, yeah, same here, especially because it's the UK. It's going to be huge. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, yeah we're interesting. I bet you can pass it on Did you guys, uh, did you guys uh, check out Shakur Stevenson's uh, Pound for Pound list? Dude, did you guys hear I, about like that? Shakur St- I like Shakur Stevenson, but I don't know about his rankings. <laughs> It's I mean, so he ranked right. himself. He ranked himself number one. I get that. I, I, as a boxer, you have to have that confidence. Of course, you're going to say you're number one, but you also got to pay respect to the guys that are actually the top guys. I, I just like okay, Terence Crawford's in there. He has Canelo in there, um, and Errol Spence. I agree with those three guys. I don't necessarily agree with the order, but Tank mm-hmm. and Jerron Ennis. Yeah. They're talented, but they're not proven yet. You know what I mean? Especially Jerron Ennis. I mean, so, as of right now, Jerron Ennis, how's he a top five pound for pound fighter if he's not even a champion? So for our that, listeners, you know Kumpa, I mean? for our listeners, uh, Shakur Stevenson's pound for pound list is as, as follows. He racked himself number one, then Terrence Crawford, then Jaron Ennis, Jaron Ennis, and then Canelo, and Jerron Davis, and Errol Spence Jr. tied for the last spot with, uh, yeah, with Davis. 
So that's the list that we're talking about for our followers. So yeah, I agree with you, Kike. I don't know. I respect the guy, but no, I don't know about that list. What, about, what do you think? What See, that's, that's what I was agreeing with, Kike. I don't even think he should be on the top five, man. I get he's in a good time. He beat, uh, you know, Jamal Hearing recently. He's not up there, though. He's not top five. Um, I agree with the other three, Canelo, Errol Spence, and Bud Crawford in there. I think Canelo is a top dog right now. I think Bud Crawford's second. I still think, you know, if Errol Spence uh, uh, was active, he should be second in my eyes. But, you know, mm -hmm. uh, Bud Crawford is second right now. And then Errol Spence Jr. third for me. And then fourth, I would say it had to be between Haney. And um, obviously we have to give props to Cambosis because he is a champion right now and it um, – uh, but I'd still see Haney up there, um, and then probably we have that that final spot for Cambosis, mm -hmm. but n not not Davis, man. Davis hasn't proved anything to us, uh, like Ike was saying. Uh, Jerron Ennis either he he hasn't done anything, and in my opinion, and um, you know, uh, right now him for himself should Chris Stevens seem to be number one? Nah, man, I, I don't see that. You know, Pancho, and and I'm a huge Davis fan, but no. I agree with you. Tank hasn't proved anything to, in my eyes so far. Uh, so I agree with you guys on that list. Uh, but they, everybody has their own yeah, I mean, I agree. I agree with three of those guys on there. Terrence Crawford, Canelo, Earl Spence, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jaron, Jaron Ennis is, is a contender. That's that's yeah. all he is right now. He hasn't even accomplished being a champion. Mm -hmm. uh, Tank has been a 130-pound champion, and he's only defended that title once. He fought for that title once. Other than that, what has he done? Nothing. No. Uh, and Shakur Stevenson, he's a two-weight division champ. He's on his way to the the top uh, 15 at least. He, I don't think if he beats Valdez this next fight, I think he cracks the top 15 for me, but definitely not top five. Top five, that's the elite of the elite, the best of the world. Canelo, for sure. Crawford, uh, Spence. Um, some people might argue Triple G uh, based off his resume. Some people might argue Tyson Fury um, or Uzik. Um, I know Juan had mentioned Haney. Haney, uh, as much as I like him, he's only fought Jojo Diaz as his best name on his resume. You know, and uh, not to knock Jojo Diaz, but, you know, Jojo Diaz is, uh, I don't think he's ever going to be a champion again. But, you know, Devin Haney beating Cambosis maybe cracks the top 15 as well for me. Uh, these younger guys, they they definitely need to prove more. You know, they need to prove more. They're definitely on their they're on the right path. I'm not taking away from what they're doing, but they need to do more. Look at I mean, it's there's no comparison, guys. Look at Canelo compared uh, to Shakur Stevens's resume. You know what I mean? Canelo has fought like 20 plus world champions. Shakur Stevenson, you fought like two or three. Um, so I mean, Jerron Ennis hasn't even fought a champion yet. So. For him to put Jerron Ennis in there, I don't know if they're just buddies. That's like me saying, uh, hey, Juan, you're a top five pound-for-pound pound fighter, you know, because he's my buddy. Or, hey, Rick, you're a top five pound-for-pound pound fighter when we all know, like, you know what, you got more to prove. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, hey, that's on the, uh, that's on that, that, uh, on that topic. Uh, guys, so we have another boxer that it broke away from uh, his stable. You know how we just recently learned that Ryan Garcia broke off from the and also whatnot. So Jamal Herring breaks off from trainer uh, Bo Mac McIntyre, also known as Taron Crawford's coach. And como se dice, como? It's Bo Mac McIntyre. 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 Mac yeah. McIntyre, also known as Taron Crawford's or coach. Or And moves, Bo Mac, yeah. Uh, and moves with yeah. trainer Manny Robles. Um, Hearing states that it was Bo Mac's decision to let him go. And according to Bo Mac, it was due to Hearing doing things behind his back uh, that he did not approve of and you know trust issues with him uh hearing is expected to return in may although no official announcement has been made what do you think what do you think about this Juancho? you know uh it sucks you know once the trust is broken i think in my opinion it's, it's better to break off and that's with anything to be honest whether it's business wise whether it's trainer wise all that um relationship wise it's, it's better just to break off um but i also do think uh we want to know the details on what he was doing behind the back. Is was it justifiable? What was it exactly that he was doing? You know, because we don't have that uh, um, 
a specific information on that. But Manny Robles, Manny Robles is known uh, trainer, you know. I think there's things that he can help him with um, and, you know, fixing or maybe even showing him a certain different stuff or strategies that he can take into these fights. Uh, we saw that he helped out, you know, uh, your boy Reese become champ, but then Reese, you know, left him as well. Uh, so Manny Robles isn't a bad trainer. I think there's things that he can help um, Jamal, uh, Jamal Hearing, uh, you know, perform better. Yeah, I what think, think uh, it, this thing, it's funny to me because usually a fighter is the one that dumps the trainer. In this instance, it was the trainer that dumped the fighter. So um, something must have happened really bad. Yeah, I mean, and, and Bomac, he don't play no games, man. I mean, he has a serious champion in Terrence Crawford who takes his craft seriously. So, you know, Bomac don't play no games. And uh, uh, Jamel Herring, who knows what he was doing. Uh, but yeah. obviously, when it comes down to trust issues or, you know, you think you're your buddy-buddy with your fighter and trainer, but he's doing shit behind your back. And, and uh, yeah, dude, like. Bomac, you know, he like you say, he doesn't play games. He's not going to put up with that crap. So he told him, hey, I'm not going to put up with this. You're, you you got to go. Uh, and that's he's saying that to an ex-champion. Like like I said, normally it's the fighter dumping the trainer, not the other way around. But Bomac, he doesn't play games, man. And he's he doesn't want that cancer around his camp, especially around mm -hmm. Terrence Crawford and all that. So, I mean, who knows what happens. But, hey, he, he went back to Manny Robles, uh, Jamel Herring, um, has known Manny Robles like his whole life. Manny Robles was the one that helped Jamel Herring get to the Olympics. Um, so they have history there. So uh, we'll see if, uh, you know, them I coming think, back together helps out. I think you said, you said it perfectly, Copa. There's always that one bad apple. And maybe yeah. he was to the to Bomac, you know. But I, I yeah. am curious to see what happened. Like, well, what actually happened that you dumped the fighter? That's kind of stupid. Yeah. You don't hear about that too much. So uh, yeah, that's on on uh, on Herring. So guys, the rematch between uh, Nuya Inoue and Nonito Donaire is set for June seventh in Japan. Uh, they will be fighting for the IPF, WBA, and WBC titles. What do you guys think about this? Hey, you guys know that I'm a huge Donaire fan. I love that guy. Hell, hell yeah, man! I'm excited for this fight. I mean, anytime it's a unification fight, the champions fighting the champions. I know Huang would agree. And we're excited for these kind of fights. Obviously, in the first fight, Naoya Inoue defeated Donaire. But to date, I think uh, Donaire has been Inoue's toughest challenge. It wasn't an easy win for Inoue that time. So, hey, now now this time around, they're fighting for more on the table. Back then, they were fighting for one belt, I believe. Uh, this time around, they're fighting for three belts. Because along the way, Naoya Inoue collected another belt. And Donaire also became a champion. So now you got three belts on the line. The winner of this fight could potentially take on the winner of the Casimero versus Butler fight. Uh, so this is what we like to see is is, is these guys duking it out. Um, and hopefully we can have a undisputed uh, bantamweight champion um, sometime this year. Like I said, as long as uh, wh whoever comes out the winner of Casimero versus uh, Butler can face the winner of Inoue Donaire. And then we'll have yeah. an undisputed bantamweight champ. Yeah. What do you think, Juan? You like Kike was saying, you know, all these fights, we like champion versus champion. It's something that we always seek for and we, we look forward to. Um, mm -hmm. I do think that Donaire is going to lose again. I think uh, Inoue will will overcome Donaire again. Pobrecito Donaire, he's kind of on the older side. So, you know. I, think I mean, we've been saying that, too, on the last two fights we previewed for him, Juan, <laughs> and he proved us wrong. But, yeah, yeah. Hey, at the end of the day, yeah. though, at the end of the day, Inoue is the monster for a reason. Um, he's already defeated Donaire once. Um, I don't see the outcome changing. But, hey, Donaire has seemed to re have revived his career. We'll see. You never know. The old man could pull uh, some extra tricks from the brag and, and, and defeat Inoue. But... I, I don't think that'll happen though. I don't think it will. But hey, I'm still excited to see this fight. Yeah, um, me too. Only because, uh, you know, it's a unification match, and uh, the the winner will come out with three belts, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll see what happens with that, guys. The biggest news that happened yesterday: Kanye West versus Pete Davidson is set to take place on April 29th at Atlanta's Mercedes-Benz Stadium as part of a boxing charity event. Supposedly, Kanye is living in the stadium until the fight. 
the, until the fight date. Uh, what do you guys think about this? Juan, what's your thoughts on this fight? <laughs> Bro, you know, Pete Davidson's a clown. Kanye's another clown, even though he's a god of music. <laughs> It's it's great. It's a great fight. Kanye has obviously a little dis, a little advantage because, in my eyes, he has the fire to get his family back together. You know, his family just separated, <laughs> and Pete Davidson is that one scumbag that comes into someone's life and takes yeah. away. You know, a why do you know life. too much about this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Juan, you're sounding a little too passionate about this. Have you, have you, you gone through one this of kind podcasts. of stuff before? Yeah. Yeah. Jeez, huh? He's like, he's like Pete Davidson is one of those scumbags that just takes everything you have. Like, whoa, take it, whoa, get the paso. Damn, Juan, I, I thought you guys wanted to play, wanted me to play this off. <laughs> no, no, no. no guys, really was, this was a it's an April Fool's joke that they played on us yesterday, and I I knew yesterday. Dude, every time it's April fucking Fools, I know somebody's gonna call me, say some stupid shit, and I know it's April Wait, Fools. Wait, who? So I, who played it on you? No, nobody. I I'm, I was on my guard up on April Fools, so this was yeah. April Fools. Yeah, this Kanye West versus Pete Davidson is an April Fools joke. Uh, yeah, this is this is Kiki's yeah. joke for the for that day. Oh my god. <laughs> No, but uh, I forgot the main source that played this uh, or put an article out. But, guys, you know if this was serious, this would have been blasted oh. everywhere on the internet. This would have been blasted everywhere. It was a little funny joke. TMC, uh, they were even that. saying that Kanye was going to live at the stadium like he did for his Donda tour or whatever. <laughs> fucking Kanye's a weirdo, dude. Kanye's <laughs> a fucking – and those bo- yeah. Kanye boots, it's fucking ugly. Yeah, uh, dude. I don't like hey, his easy either. Hey, that, but that's that, uh, that's Juancho's type of fashion. Yeah, right Juancho like he knows all about that. Tell us, like, about Juancho. but wearing know, a da, wearing a trash Danda, bag and all that. Danda Danda two is a a great. What the hell great. does Danda even mean? It's I don't I think it's I don't know actually. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what is his that? He's like, I love Kanye. Is it, his, Danda. Is, it, uh, is it his mom? I don't know. I know that. Is it a shoe? Uh, no, because I think on one of his songs it, it's like just it says Donda Donda. I think it's his mom's heartbeat. What? Okay, that's weird. Yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> no. Hey guys, I know that uh, we didn't uh, put this in the notes, but you know the Will Smith and the Chris Rock thing. You know, we know what you guys watch the Oscars. I mean, obviously we've all seen it. I didn't watch the Oscars. I just my brother was at the Oscars actually, and he's the one that told me about it. He texted me right away like, "Dude, check out the Oscars!" Like, what's going on in the Oscars? Because um, he's part of a a I don't know what he's part of, but he gets credentials to go to the Oscars. My brother, uh, shout out to my brother Max. Max. Um, so I was like, what, what are you, this is all scripted. You know, I checked that out, dude. It was crazy. Y ahora este, one of the Paw Brothers wants Will Smith and Chris Rock to duke it out, no? Uh, no, Jake, yeah, they, Jake uh, Paul being Jake yeah, Paul. Yeah, it was Jake Paul. Yeah. Oh, Manager yeah. Jake Paul coming in. He offered, you know, Kanye West and Pete Davidson some, some feria on the side for them to buy. And then he also offered, uh, I think it's $4 million? I I don't know how much each uh, for Fifteen Chris million. Rock. Oh, 15 million each for Chris million Rock. Each. No way. Or uh, Chris Rock versus Will Smith. Shit. And then Chris Rock had a uh, he had a, uh, a stand-up comedy uh, show, I think, in Chicago. Don't quote me on that. I'm not sure what, he's, what his he's state touring. was. He's touring. He's touring. He uh, sold out his first, his first uh, his, event. His first he sold it out. Well, that, yeah. well that's why they, they scripted this, compa, so that he you could sell. So? You think it was scripted? I don't, I don't think so, man. You never know. I, obviously, it seemed legit, but you know, you still truly never know, man. Because I mean, it's okay, ho- it's dude. at the end of the day, it's Hollywood business, man. Yeah, Hollywood but like, business uh, is gonna do Hollywood business. For a man to hit and slap another man on live TV on in the Oscars, not about the Oscars, but on live TV, that's so disrespectful, man. I don't know. I don't know. I know we're not a you know we're not a Oscars or fucking gossip. You know, podcast, but that shit was crazy, man. When I saw that, I was fucked. But I like Will Smith. I really do like that guy. But this time, I was like, dude, really? You did that to Chris Rock? That's kind of messed up, man. And I know Chris Rock. He's a comedian. He's joked about other people so many times. Other comedians have joked about other people, and nobody. Sometimes, knows sometimes people. words hurt, compa. Sometimes that's hurt true. words. Words oh, hurt. Oh, well, man. that's a whole thing. That's a whole thing about because his his wife has alopecia, so I think yeah. that's why Chris Rock. I mean. Will Smith got offended. I don't know. I don't know. That's that's another that's another drama. Damn, Ricky's very passionate about this fight, man. I, he obviously <laughs> wants this one. 
No. No, it was crazy because I've been hitting it all over the place. I was like, what the fuck? What happened? Yeah. I think uh, Boxing Talk should get in talks with our, our – I'll get in talks with our, you know, our associates over there and promote this fight, and maybe we can make some money out of it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's enough oh, about yeah. that, the Oscars, whatever. Let's get into our fight preview, guys. Guys, I'm excited about Triple G, Gen- Gennady Golovkin versus uh, Ryota Murata um, for the um, – IBF and finally WBA. the return of Triple G, man. Yes, finally Jeez. for the IBF and WBA Super World uh, Middleweight, uh, which is 160 pounds title unification fight. This is going to take place at the Super Arena, uh, Saitama, Saitama, Japan. Everything in Japan, baby. Really. Um, it's going to happen on April 9th, 2022, via the Zone uh, at 2:10 a.m. Uh, so Gennady Golovkin, I know who you guys you guys know who this is. Triple G, IBF World Middleweight Champion, forty one. Who's that guy, Compa? Uh, Triple G is one of the <laughs> Just <crazy> kidding. <laughs> so Just Triple G is forty one wins, uh, one loss, one draw, um, thirty six KOs. He's orthodox. He's five eleven, age thirty nine from Karaganda, Kazakhstan, but he lives Kazakhstan. in Los Angeles, California. Last he last fought Camille Suermeta. Uh, which he won by seventh round, uh, yeah, seventh round, and then referee uh, technical decision. Yeah, the referee technical decision. Because he uh, he stopped. The, I think the ref stopped it, or or the guy uh, Zerameta stopped. He stopped on the stool. Oh, that's right. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. Right, that's right. And uh, uh, the, that was so. He has a sixty month layoff, guys. So he's been yeah. he's been out of the out of the boxing world for sixty months. So he's finally coming back. Notable opponents for him is Kasim Wama. Uh, he won. He beat Daniel Gill. Gill, yeah. Gill. Uh, David Lemieux. He beat David Lemieux. He beat Kill Brook. He beat Daniel Jacobs. He beat well. Not Saul Alvarez was a uh, what is it again? Copa the he uh, he it was a draw yeah. and then a loss. Yes, to Canelo. And then you know now Ryan Murata so. Dude, I'm excited about this. Ryan Murata, he is a WBA Super World Middleweight Champion. He has 16 victories, uh, two losses, 13 KOs. He's orthodox as well. He's 6'1", age 36, from Nara, Nara, Japan. Lives in Tokyo, Japan. He last, uh, his last fight was Steven Butler, which he beat him by fifth round TKO uh, in December 2019. He has a 28-month layoff. Notable opponents for him is, well, now good Triple G. What do you guys think about this? Are you guys excited? I'm, uh, I'm one. I'm excited to see Triple G, but also, I'm curious to see how, what Triple G we're gonna see. Are we gonna see the Triple G of old, the one that's a monster and and handles business, or are we gonna see literally an old Triple G? Because right now, I know in our notes we put that he's 39 years old, guys. But literally at the time of the fight, he's gonna be 40. He's going to be 40 years old because his birthday is April 8th. So we're only a couple way, uh, days away from that. So literally the day before is his birthday. He's going to be 40 years old. So are we going to see a 40-year-old legend show that he's an old man? And especially with ring rust, being 40 years old and being out almost a year and a half, yeah, that's going to affect him. So I don't know. We're going to see. But also, I mean... Ryota Murata is in his mid thirties, not mm-hmm. not quite that much uh, younger, but he's been out of the ring two years, about two and a half years. I'm surprised this guy still has his title. It's like he's been holding on to mm-hmm. that strap for two and a half years. Like I'm surprised they didn't strip him of it. I mean they they stripped freaking Ugas of it with. Uh, I mean they they stripped Pacquiao of his belt. They never stripped Murata. I don't know why, but hey. Uh, it's it's good to see. It's gonna uh, on our time here in California. It's gonna take place at two a.m. You best believe I'm gonna be up that early watching that fight. Uh, I'm gonna watch it and uh, I'm gonna be excited for it because it's Triple G, man. Yeah. What about you, Juancho? Yeah. Uh, you know, it's an exciting fight. You know, hopefully we do see uh, Triple G come back and be Triple G, the guy that we know. Obviously, like Kiko was saying, I have to agree with him on that. Hopefully, it doesn't show that he has ring rust or the long layoff, uh, you know, it doesn't affect him in any sorts of way. Um, but the other guy, too, man, you know, yeah. Rayo Murata is also, you know, coming back from a, a really long layoff as well. 28 months, it, you know, we've seen in the past how this affects each fighter. Um, but honestly, at right now, I think they're both on, like, 
towards the end of their career, once 36, once, you know, about to be 40. Uh, so, you know, to me, this is a, as of right now, a 50 50 fight, not knowing how Triple G um, is yeah. exactly at mm-hmm. the moment. So it can go either way. I agree, Juan. I, I, I agree. It, uh, of course, the favorite's going to be Triple G because. It's kind of like uh, the Dodgers or Yankees. It, the Dodgers or Yankees are always going to be popular, even if they're having bad seasons, just because they're marketable teams. Yeah. Triple G is a marketable guy. People know his name. And even let's say he's had two or three losses in a row, but because he has the name Triple G, people are going to go for him. Uh, yeah. No different than Tyson or Ali, you know. But uh, this is a 50 50 fight, guys. It's, gonna, it's not going to be easy for Triple G. He's a 40 year old man, long layoff, but Murata, too. Murata is coming from a long layoff. Yeah, he's younger, but at the look at their resumes. Murata, I think this is the first true opponent he faces, which is surprising because he is a champion, but yet this is the first notable opponent he's facing is uh, Triple G. Um, I think he's had a little easier road than other champions have had as far as facing tough fights. Uh, but we'll see. I don't know. It, it, it really depends on Triple G and how his preparation was. And because uh, we haven't been hearing much from him. I mean, we haven't been hearing much about his training or, or what's been going on. So I don't know. So, Ultimately, I'm still going to stick with uh, Triple G, guys. Okay, I was going to say Triple that. Couple, like, okay, Triple G. Juancho, who are you going for? I'm going with Triple G as well because obviously we want that fight in September versus Canelo. But if he doesn't perform or even if he does win, but if he doesn't perform as well, I don't think he should get that fight with Canelo because he's old now, man. Anything, you know. It can affect them a lot. I'm, I'm a Triple G fan, and I agree with you guys, Ring Rust and all that. Hopefully, we get that Triple G that we want. So I'm going Triple G on that one. Are you guys gonna Are you guys gonna be up that early on Saturday morning? Oh, no. <laughs> Come I thought you were a Triple G fan. I am, but I like my seat better. <laughs> oh, there you go. What about you guys? Are you gonna be up two in the morning? I am. It probably, but it's start... not gonna start at two. Is it? It'll start the, like at. The... It'll start like probably like at 5 a.m. Yeah, probably. Yeah. like Okay, maybe I can wake up at 5. I'll watch it. That's yeah. fucking early, man. Um, guys, uh, Compa, you want to you wanna break down your, your, your favorite, Ryan Garcia's? Oh, definitely. Fight. Another another king returning here. Uh, king. Another exciting another uh, exciting return. Compa, he's more popular than Triple G. <laughs> Anyways, uh, we got Ryan Garcia versus Emmanuel Tegal. <laughs> Guys, this is going to be a super lightweight fight, um, which is a 140-pound division, although this is going to be at a catch weight of 139 pounds. Um, this fight's going to take place at the Alamo Dome in San Diego, uh, San Diego, San Antonio, Texas, uh, April 9th, 2022. Also going to take place on the zone, but this one, uh, California time, is going to take place at 6 p.m. Uh, you got uh, Ryan King Rye Garcia, who's ranked number three in the WBC uh, lightweight rankings. Uh, he's 21 and 0 with 18 knockouts. He's orthodox, five foot ten, only 23. He's from Victorville, California, and lives in San Diego, California. His last fight, the last time we saw Ryan Garcia in the ring, was against Luke Campbell, uh, in which he won by seventh round TKO. Uh, that was back in January of 2021. So he's coming from a 15 month layoff, guys, a little over a year. Um, he hasn't fought honestly any notable opponents. A lot of people could say Luke Campbell. But Luke Campbell has never been a, a champion. Uh, nobody he's fought has been a champion yet. So uh, Garcia has yet to fight, fight a former champ or a champion t- up to date. He's taking on Emmanuel, the Game Boy Tegao, who's ranked number nine uh, at the WBC. He's got 32 victories, one defeat with 15 knockouts. Um, his one defeat, guys, was his first ever fight. Other than that, he's he's won 32 um fights in a row so he's 32 and 0 he's also orthodox he's five foot eight he's 33 years old and this guy is from Accra, ghana his last fight was against mason menard in which he won uh by a majority draw back in november 2020 so he's coming off a long layoff too a 17 month layoff almost a year and a half um his notable opponents he's faced are mazanke fana and moses uh paulus so yeah guys compa I know who you're going for. You're going for Tego, ain't you? Who? Compa, you. How did you know? Yeah, how did you know? Because <laughs> you don't like Garcia. Nah, I'm just kidding. I'm going Garcia. <laughs> I'm going Garcia. <laughs> no, que no lo querías, pues, compa. 
No, no lo quiero, pero, like, hey, he's... <laughs> no lo quiero, but I'll go for him. Un chico, ¿por qué? García, ¿no? Oh, you already know. You already know, yeah. man. Take out. Juancho. Juancho, you're not. <laughs> no, I'm going uh, for Garcia, Ryan no, Garcia. I think... Uh, a lot of people don't know Tegao, but Tegao is going to be a good opponent for him. Uh, he should come back uh, strong, hopefully. Uh, unless, I, I don't know, it could be an upset. Like I said, Tegao is 32-0 and 0 since his first career fight. I mean, Tegao has been a professional since he was 15 years old. So his first ever Jeez. loss was when he was 15 years old. The man is 33 years old now. So he's an 18-year veteran. Um, my age. So... Yeah, so he's got 18 years experience in the ring. Uh, so I don't know. It could be a mistake, but you never know. Supposedly Garcia's, uh, his training's going well. I know we mentioned the 139 uh, pounds thing, but guys, uh, in reality, this was part of the contract. Uh, it, it came out that this was always the deal. That, uh, they don't know why people made it such a big deal. I know we made it a big deal too, uh, but that was always the contracted weight was 139. Um, since it's not a title fight or anything, he figured, you know, why try to cut down to 135 when uh, it could fight 139. But yeah, I'm definitely going Ryan Garcia. He's 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 the naturally bigger guy, taller, lengthy, stronger, faster, younger. So um, he's got everything in his on his side. Guys, I'm going who's Garcia. playing the baile del beeper? Not me. <laughs> <laughs> That's definitely Juan because he's uh he's muting himself there. <laughs> I think I kind of left my uh my my fucking chicken in the fucking oven. There's probably burning. Oh god, not bad. Juancho, who are you going for? I'm going for uh I think I'm going for you know I have to go for the the fellow guy from Ghana, the fellow man. Ghanaian. Yes, fellow Ghanaian. You're from Ghana, Juan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> si estás chocolatito. Um, no, I, you know, obviously I don't want to see Ryan Garcia win, but I'm going to go Garcia. I think he's going to win. Shut the hell up, Juan. You know you want to. You're the one out of us three that sends me the most Ryan Garcia crap. Hell no. You're capping. You are such only, a liar. I only sent it to you because you're the biggest fan of his, bro. Yeah. Oh, yeah, sure. Up. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. That's why you Bro. initiate the Ryan Garcia stuff, and you're always that's sending why you, it to me. That's uh-huh. why you got the Ryan Garcia fucking yeah, right. Uh huh. You were like, "Oh, guys, I'm into." Funko I got him because, because those are Ryan the Garcia. only. I got him because those are the nah, only boxing nah. Funko Pops out there. There's only six of them. Go no joke. Well get like, them even right, even after Garcia put out the the tequila, you bought tequila, the Dior. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I bought, I bought his Mar, I, I bought his uh Marlo skin thing. I'm buy, I'm drinking more Gatorade now. <laughs> more Gatorade. I, I'm wearing I'm wearing a uh, Dolce Gabbana now. Yeah, yeah. See, see, este right Garcia sale con unas pinches speedos. El copo lo va a comprar. I've been wearing speedos already. <laughs> Hey, Juancho, you want to break down the Erickson Lubin versus Sebastian Fajuda fight? Yeah, so for our next fight, we got Erickson Lubin versus Sebastian Fondura, um, a WBC in Rome world super uh, welterweight, a 154-pound uh, title fight. Um, this is going to be taking place in Nevada, Las Vegas, U.S., um, at the Virgin Hotels, Las Vegas. Wait, um, it's taking place in Nevada, Las Vegas? <laughs> <laughs> Las Vegas, Nevada. <laughs> <laughs> it's taking uh, place in the USA, California. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is in Calif- It is USA, and it is California. <laughs> Same thing. Yeah, but you, you potato, said, potato, you said it right? potato, potato. No. <laughs> That's what happens uh, when you're a Ryan Garcia fanboy. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you say April Ryan Garcia n- around him, Copa, he gets all nervous and giggly, and that's why he messes up his words. Hell no. Hell no. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so Anyways, this is going to be April 9th as well, uh, 2022. Uh, it's going to be on Showtime at 7 p.m. Uh, Pacific time for us here. Um, just a reminder, we always say our times in Pacific time. Um, and yeah. you got first the first fighter, Erickson, the Hammer Lubin, number one, WBC, and number six, WBO ranked. Uh, he's 24, 1, and 17 KOs. Uh, Southpaw, 5'10", at age of 26, from Orlando, Florida. Uh, his last fight was back in June 2021, 
against uh, Jason Rosario, which was a W, um, which is what a ten month layoff for him now. And yeah, uh, one of his notable, one of three of his notable fighters are Jason Rosario, which he took a W, uh, the six round KO, and then you got what? How do you say that? Kike Ayesh Ish Ishay Smith. Ishay Ishay Smith, Ishay Smith, um, which is a W in the third in the third round, um, in February 2019, and then you got a Jermel Charlo, which he took a, a L against in the first round by a KO in October 2017, and then that's you his got, only losses to the champ. Yeah, and you got Sebastian the Towering Inferno from Dura, um, which is number two WBC ranked 18. Zero and one, uh, with twelve KOs. Southpaw, um, he's six six, freaking tall as hell. Um, Especially for that division. Oh yeah. yeah, and he's at the age of twenty four from West Palm Beach, Florida, um, but lives in Coachella, California. Uh, his last fight was against Sergio Garcia, which he took a W in unanimous decision in December of twenty twenty one. Only a four month layoff. Um, let us know. Break it down for us, Kike. Who are you going for? You pick first. You broke it down for us. I want to. See, I'm curious to see what you you say. But right, a you couple know. of Florida boys duking it out here. Yeah, I, I, I'm gonna go for Fondura. You know, I think uh, the guy, he, he's this guy for his height. He can show that he has a lot of skills tactically. Um, obviously, he struggles sometimes with you know throwing his punches because he does have to swing a little bit longer. Uh, with his arms and all, but I think he has all the skills to defeat, you know, Lubin. Lubin is a great fighter himself. He sh- That's why he's number one WBC, and that's why he's ranked by the two organizations overall. But, you know, Sebastian is number two, and I think this is why he's going to take the Vic. I think he's the, the – not to say the A side, but he's the guy um, in my eyes that is – the most skillful in this fight and more, uh, I think, has a more fire in, in, in between them two. What about you, Kiki? I think going based off of I'm, – I'm a big believer in momentum, guys. Momentum is everything. Uh, Lubin in his life, last fight looked amazing. He looked great, and he defeated a former champ in Jason Rosario. He's already got the experience with Charlo, even though it was one round – But he learned from that mistake. Sometimes it takes a loss for a fighter to get better. And ever since that loss to Charlo, uh, Lubin has looked amazing. He's 26 years old. He's he's maybe a year, two years away from his prime, so he's getting there. I think he's more progressed than Fundura. I think Fundura is still in the learning phases for me. He did not look good. Even though he won by unanimous decision, guys, he did not look good to me against Sergio Garcia. And he didn't look good in the fight prior the other guy that's going to be in this card uh jamonte clark he had a draw with which is a guy he should have blown out of there so like i said i'm a big believer in momentum sebastian fundura i think the hype with him yeah he's got skills don't get me wrong he's he's talented but the biggest thing why he's hyped is because of uh the 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 fact that he's so tall for that weight division that's really yeah. why people talk about him guys let's be realistic yeah. he didn't look good against sergio garcia his last fight he didn't look good the 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 fight before that. I'm gonna have to go Lubin. Lubin's gonna fight him on the inside. He's gonna have to, and those long arms of Fundura are gonna have to punch all funky. He's not he's not gonna be able to get to him. So um, I got Lubin. I got Lubin winning, and because Lubin's ready to challenge for a title again, I think he's ready, man. He's he's entering his prime years. And and I agree with you, Gompa. Like I like I like Fundura. You know, like you said, you know, he's a tall guy uh, for that weight division, but I don't think I don't think he'll he'll win this fight. I, I'm going Lubin on this one. Lubin, Lubin, yeah, Lubin. And okay. then obviously, you see his his resume, man. You know, I, I think Lubin has his. So yeah, so like you we said, going Fondura Lubin, really. Pancho, Fondura, no? Yeah, yeah. That so shit. essentially, what guys, this is, this fight. Essentially, the winner of this fight um, is supposed to take on uh, the winner of Castaño. Uh, Castaño Charlo. So, I mean, you already got Tim Sue waiting in line to fight the winner of that because he's the mandatory on the WBO side. On the WBC side, you're going to have either Fondura or Lubin waiting in line to fight Charlo or Castaño. 
Um, so I don't know. We'll see. Maybe the winner of this fight should take on Tim Su. That yeah. would be good. And then that way, the winner of that fight takes on the winner of Castaño Charlo. But we'll see. Yeah. This is a, we'll a WBC interim title fight. So yeah. We'll see what happens with that fight, guys. And uh, on to the leaderboard, guys. Juan is at 22. Uh, guesses correct. Five five incorrect. Kike is at 27 incorrect. I am at um, 30 correct. Not, I'm just kidding. I'm at uh, 18 of uh, correct uh, guesses and nine. No, is am I reading it right, Copa? I am, right? You said 18 guesses? Yeah, yeah, I'm 18 guesses correct and then nine incorrect, no? Yeah, 18 and 9 record. Yeah, but, yeah. Why are you laughing, Piche Juan? <laughs> this is what Shannon flip it around and be like, wait, wait, am I reading right? You're saying <laughs> oh, but guys, uh, the, le- the leaderboard is something we keep track of. All the fights that we preview, just like the three that we just previewed, we, we as you saw, we pick... Uh, uh, we pick who we think is going to win. If we pick correctly, that goes on our W column. If we pick incorrectly, that goes on our L column. So, yeah, like uh, Ricky was saying, Juan's got 22 victories, five defeats. I've got 20 victories, seven defeats. Ricky's got 18 victories, nine defeats. There we go. I'm the uh, Gabe Rosado of this. <laughs> it's Gabe Rosado. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Gabe, hey uh Gabe Rosado is gonna be on the on the undercard of Garcia Tega. Oh yeah, I, I saw that on Instagram. Yeah, yeah he's gonna cool. fight uh he's gonna oh. fight Shane Mosley Jr. Oh, R- Ricky basically R- Ricky basically just said he likes to just get beat up and lose <laughs> for fun. Hey, he's entertaining, that's what matters, man. Hey guys, Fuck, but man. uh yeah, to wrap this up, man. Uh, yeah, guys, again, thank you for listening to this episode. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed it. Whether you're commuting, you're biking, you're running, whatever it is that you're doing, thank you for checking us out. Uh, we appreciate you guys tuning in. Uh, Enrique, uh, I'm excited for you to check out that massive concert tomorrow. Oh, yeah, I'm uh, taking my kids to watch uh, Blippy. <laughs> Stop <laughs> yeah. lying, bro. Stop lying. We all know you did it for yourself. You were like, man, I'm such a fan of him. Yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> When you have kids one day, you'll understand instead of uh, fanboying over the Nelk boys, like, oh, my God, <laughs> Kyle. <laughs> oh, my God, Kyle reminds me of Enrique. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, and then, uh, and then uh, Ricky reminds you of Gabe, no? <laughs> 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 there's, this, there's this guy named Gabe Copa. You just got to look him up. Okay. Gabe on uh, on Nelk boys. He must, he, 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 I'm pretty sure he's handsome, right? Uh, <laughs> 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 oh shit! All right, guys, man, that's uh, it. Hey, watch a good luck on your soccer game tomorrow. Thank you, man. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's uh, good luck on that, man. And uh, yeah, anything else you guys want to add? No, guys, just remember on Instagram, it's Boxing Talk Podcast. On Twitter, Boxing Talk Pod. And we're starting out new on YouTube, Boxing Talk. Uh, thank you guys for the views on YouTube. We've been consistent with the audio, so thanks for that consistency, guys. Uh, it, it keeps us motivated to keep doing this. Uh, like we said, this is just our hobby. We enjoy doing it. But now we're starting to enjoy not only doing it for ourselves, but putting out a good product out there for you guys to keep you informed about the boxing world. Uh, so YouTube, like we said, uh, we're starting out. Maybe 400 is, is is little compared to the big YouTube channels that go in the thousands. But, hey, we'll get there one day uh, for, for a couple guys just starting out couple local boys here from southern california it's it's a pretty big deal for us so little by little guys we'll get up there so thanks a lot we appreciate it yeah thanks to all of you guys juancho yeah kike said it all you know follow us as well on our um social medias at boxing talk and on instagram box talk podcast on instagram boxing talk pod on twitter and you know search us up on youtube at boxing talk podcast or you know just put boxing talk we should pop up as well um and we do appreciate you guys, you know, hitting us up, um, talking to us on, on our social medias as well. Uh, Kike does a great job in responding on mm-hmm. uh, Instagram. So we do appreciate that, you know, here and there, Ricky and I will pop in and, and say what's up to you guys since, you know, sometimes we do get requests of where we're at or who, we're, who they're talking to. Um, so, you know, we do appreciate that. And, you know, we're, we're here every week trying to keep you guys updated. 
Uh, I, we get great feedback with the format, you know, that we have with all the type of news that we give. And, and that's all thanks to Kiki as well. So thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you, thank you. And for me, guys, happy birthday, Suegra. I love you. My mother-in-law. Uh, well, yesterday was her birthday, but I'm going to go visit her today. So with that, guys, that is all. Peace. See you guys next time. See you guys. Have a good one. Peace.